Now, I'm delighted to say I can welcome Davide Brivio, newly appointed racing director who obviously joins the team from MotoGP. Uh, Davide, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Hi. Hello to everybody. <laughs> So um, what we're going to do is we're going to hear from Davide. We're not going to see Davide. We're basically shutting his system down to as basic as we can get. Uh, it's also worth saying that I'm here at Enstone and Davide is in Dubai. Uh, other people you're hearing from uh, are over in Vire as well. So uh, this is the virtual world in which we all live. Uh, so Davide, I'm going to send some questions your way and we just have to hope for the best. Uh, Andreas Rubo, Spanish Public Television says, how do you see Fernando Alonso? Do you think he has a chance of winning this season? Yes, of course. I'm very, I'm very exci excited to see, to see Fernando. And uh, I mean, we have a, we have a, a guy which is a great champion, and also I can I can feel him extremely motivated. I mean, he's coming back in, into a difficult difficult sport, difficult environment, while he was enjoying <laughs> in other activity. So his desire to be back in the difficult in the most difficult championship and to fight against everybody shows how strongly motivated is him and. Uh, I can I can feel chatting with him. You can see how strong is how hard he's working, how strong is his desire to be back. So I sure I'm sure he, he will put all his effort. And if we will be capable to give him a good package, for sure he will be able to fight for 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 the great position. Yes. Marika Lasselva from F1 Grand Prix.it says, what are your first feelings in a new team? Uh, do you think it's going to be difficult to deal with such a driver like Fernando Alonso? No, I don't think so. I don't think. I mean, uh, I, I mean, we had, uh, we had just some first chat and I feel like a very, I mean, a very normal guy, just extremely motivated, extremely willing to to find and to put together everything is necessary to to get the best out of the car, the best out of the team, uh, because I mean, he's coming back and he's not coming back just to 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 drive a car. He's coming back to 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 try to get uh, a good results, to get some satisfaction. And yeah, it's it's quite demanding, but that's what he, what I like. I mean, we need we need this type of of, of driver that really keen to put everything together to try the maximum so welcome welcome this type of attitude this type of approach and of course we will have to try to to work together uh, as best as possible in order to 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 use this uh, this uh, his abilities and his potential Peter Nygaard from BT says will Christian Lundgaard have any role in the Alpine F1 team this year Christian is one of uh, our uh, very good driver in our academy. We're very proud of this, uh, the job of the academy. Uh, the, 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 all the, the young guys, we, we, are, we are growing up. And Christian will have, uh, will have some role. Yes, he will work on a simulation, uh, on a simulator and during the season. And of course, his main target is to, to get the best possible results on F2. But we keep, in, we keep in an eye on him. We follow him very closely. And uh, yes, he's one of the guys that uh, we, have, uh, we have good expectations. So we will try to use in a sim. He already tested uh, uh, last month in uh, Le Castellet, Paul Ricard. And uh, yeah, we will try to, to involve as much as possible in our program. But he's a, he's a part of our family and we will try to do our best to, to exploit his potential. Luke Smith from Autosport says, what was it about the Alpine F1 project that made you leave Suzuki's MotoGP squad? And how excited are you for the new challenge in Formula One? Yeah, I mean, of course, it was not easy to leave, uh, to leave uh, my, my old team, uh, an environment which I knew very well. But uh, yeah, Formula One has been, uh, has been for me a dream for, for a long time. And uh, it's very exciting for me to start something completely new, to get into a new environment. Of course, I have a lot to learn. I had a lot to, to understand, 
but it's it's I mean it's it's adrenaline, you know. For me, it's uh, oxygen to 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 get to work and to 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 learn a, a lot of things. So uh, it was an opportunity which I felt I ha I had to take. Uh, probably I would have regret if I I wouldn't take. So now here I am, and I will I will try to do my best, and I hope I hope I can I can give some contribute some some contribution to, to the Alpine Formula One team uh, with my experience. It won't be easy. I need some time, but of course I'm, I'm fully committed to try to, to get involved as best as possible. Laurent Dupin from Canal Plus uh, asks, what does racing director mean? What will your role be during the race weekend? Yeah, basically I will be in charge of uh, the track track operation, tracks activity, so everything happens on the circuit. Uh, so basically our job as a race team is to exploit the full potential of the car. In Enston, there is a lot of people, actually it's a big pressure and big responsibility because we have like over 1,000 people between Enston and Vury preparing the chassis, the car and the, the power unit. And our job, we will be a much limited number of people at the racetrack, but is there is where we have to extract the full potential of the car. So I will be in charge of that. And uh, of course, I'm not I'm not an engineer, but I have to try to make sure that engineers, mechanics, all the drivers, all the people involved, uh, they have all they need to performance at the very best. And in this way, if we if we are able to 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 have a, a strong team, which is already is already in place, uh, we we will be able to extract the full potential of the car. So that's the job. The job is to go to go at the circuit, go around the world, and try to get out the best of what the guys, the more than a thousand people, have prepared at home. And so we have a big responsibility and big pressure because uh, we have to we have to give a value to their job. Uh, Christian Moreno asks uh, from Grupo Imagine, Luca De Meo said he wants to win. Is the team ready to fight for a victory with Mercedes and Red Bull or is the podium more realistic? Of course, we want to win. Everybody wants to win. Everybody in the team wants to win. Uh, we have to be realistic. I mean, last year uh, we did uh, three podiums, so we started to get close to the top position. And that's that's where we have where we have to start from. So first of all, we have to be uh, fighting for the podium, hopefully regularly fighting for the podium, and then step by step go close to the the, the best possible position. Of course, the final target is to win. Probably we have uh, we have a route to get there. We have a road to to achieve this target. That's what we what we ready to do, and uh, of course this year is a kind of a special year because everybody is looking at the 2022, the new regulation, the new car is, which is under development. So this is a kind of a, a preparation year where we hope in 2022 to improve even more our competitiveness. But but the winning is always in our target, and I'm sure that our driver for first they wanna they wanna get there. So. Yes, that's the target, because you need to get the target, you need to get a dream, and then you have to work very hard to achieve it. Uh, Davide, we're going to do one more question in English, but at this point I'd also like to ask um, Italian journalists to send in your questions uh, for your Italian speaking session. But just to round out this one, Davide, Adam Cooper of motorsport.com says um, a lot of your management skills transfer straight from MotoGP to Formula One. What are the biggest challenges you face? You've sort of touched upon that. But interestingly, do you think it would be easier or harder for an F1 boss going to MotoGP or is it easier or harder to go from MotoGP into Formula One? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I will tell you maybe in one year time. In this moment, in this moment, I think it's probably harder for MotoGP to go to Formula One, I think, because Formula One is, uh, is a bigger organization, it's more complex and uh, many more people. So I think it's a little bit more complex. So <laughs> that is a good news for me. <laughs> and uh, but uh, yeah, let's see, let's see. I feel, as I say, I feel 
a lot of similarities because a uh, team grew, a team teamwork, uh, drivers that are similar as attitude, as a, as a willing to the to the riders, and uh, probably it's much more complex in terms of technicality. So many more parameters, uh, more problems, uh, aerodynamic, which you don't have. But this is a technical job. In terms of putting the team together, trying to, to, to strengthen the group, I think there are similarities. But yeah, I mean, it's no doubt that Formula One is more complex than MotoGP, but uh, they, they both have similarities, I think. Davide, thank you very much for your time in English. Uh, we couldn't see you, but great to hear from you. Um, that concludes the English part of this, and I'd like to hand over to my Italian-speaking colleague.